Three more WTFs. <laughs> Alright, so we have three WTFs for you. You guys love these videos and we love them too. Because it gives us a little chance to talk some major shit. Three major shits. So the first WTF is about Fluffy. Because everybody loves Fluffy. What about him? He had a new Funko Pop and it's Jumping Fluffy. And it was signed. It says now signed. I think Fluffy has signed more Funko Pops than anybody else in existence. He probably has signed more Funko Pops than he has changed underpants in his entire life. I mean, that's how many Pops he's signing. I'm not saying that he don't change his underpants. I don't know. Wait what I'm saying is he signs all ton of Funko Pops. I mean, you gotta think, most people probably change their underpants, what, like once a day, twice a day? I change them twice a day, so I get twice up. Twice a day, why? I wake up, I take my shower, I put new underpants on. When I go to bed, second pair of underpants. Why would you do that? No wonder we have so much laundry up there all the time. My underpants aren't that big. It's from your big old socks. I got big old socks. You got those Godzilla feet over there. What are you okay. talking about? Anyway, listen, here's my theory. He were to be a two underpants a day guy. He signed more Funko Pops than that. No, listen. Sometimes, especially when you're little, he probably poopied or pee peed once in a while. So that's maybe three to four underpants on certain days when he was a little kid. So, I mean, this number is pretty big. He's gotta be what, in his Are you 40s? done? Is he in his 40s? So this Funko Pop went up for sale on September the 13th. If you like Fluffy, fine. But can we all agree that they're making way too many Fluffy Funko Pops? Way too many. Like it's overwhelming. And the reason why they make so many of him is because he is good friends with Funko, specifically Mike Becker. So I think they just green light anything. I wonder if he goes to Mike and he's like, hey man, so what do you think if there's a pop of me jumping? Then that's the, exactly the conversation. Does he do that? And Mike's like, yeah, that, that sounds good. I think that we should totally do that. We should have you jumping. I'm Funmaker Mike. He does not sound like that. Well, how does he sound then? Hey everybody, Funmaker Mike here. Hey everybody, Funmaker Mike here. That's what he sounds like. No. He doesn't sound like that. No. Okay, well that's how I'm hearing him. You're hearing him wrong. Yeah, so anyway, I'm done with Fluffy. I don't want to hear about him ever again in my whole life. Well, <laughs> you that's are. where I'm at. Because you collect Funko. If you stop collecting I, Funko, you'll never, I'll hear, never about hear about Fluffy, Fluffy again. The second WTF pisses me off a lot. This one is about fun days for people who live overseas. So this email came over from our friend, Aussie Poppin' Paul, and you guys probably know him. He has his own YouTube channel. He's a really good dude. He got an email from Funko Support. Hi there. We truly apologize for the delay in response. Our fulfillment center is not able to ship outside the US. So we have been working hard on trying to find a resolution for customers like you who made the amazing effort to come to our in-person Fun Days event. Unfortunately, we are not able to assist with processing a return exchange for you if it will be taking place outside the US. If you have a valid US address for us to use, in parentheses, excluding PO boxes, I would be happy to assist you in starting this return process. Please let me know if you're able to proceed. Can I yell about this? Sure. So they allowed people to go to fun days using international addresses and cards and everything, mm -hmm. but now they f***ed up and they can't even find a resolution for the people who got f***ed over by their dumb f an intentional sicker situation and they're like oh well sorry we can't help you Bull if they can't deliver to p.o boxes because they use ups or fedex or whatever they can march their asses over to the post office and deliver to somebody's u.s post office address and not only that but they can just go and make a special exception for this case to deliver to international customers that is them being stingy as it is them being bullshit artists, and it is them being pieces of shit. I'm so aggravated over that. It's like you pulled the words right out of my mouth. You stole my line. I'm also equally agitated because people like Aussie Pop and Paul flew over to the United States, which is not cheap at all, nope. stayed in San Diego, which is not cheap at all, and went to Fun Days and San Diego Comic-Con. Again, that is not cheap. So now Funko is basically like, hey, um, it's all cool and all, but if, if you have a valid address, we can hook you up. But if you don't, well, f you, ass. So Aussie Pop and Paul spent all this money to come here, see Funko, but Funko can't afford a f shipping label for overseas. Uh, what you just said is correct. 
It's garbage, it is trash. And this is not the way that people, fans, collectors, and if things keep continuing to go this way, you're gonna turn off a lot of fans and you're gonna have they more people, have. you're gonna have more people turning away from collecting Funko Pops. And at this point, I think we're in danger mode, Funko. I think we need to turn the ship around. We've been saying this over no, and over. No, turn the around because that's what it is. It's but this is not the way to fix things or to make your collectors any happier. I can't imagine an insane amount of those 3,000 or so people being at fun days were international. Can't imagine that number being over 100, maybe 200 at most. I mean, you can make the exception. You're just being cheapskates. It's bullshit. It is. I don't like it. And Funko, we hope you fix this problem and hook up people like Aussie Pop and Paul. It can't be that many people. No, it can't be. This whole situation was messed up before, but now it has me like really angry knowing that they're doing that to the international people. Oh yeah, you can you can buy even though you live overseas, but we're not shipping anything to you even though we're messing up. We are actively making mistakes and we're not gonna do anything about it if you don't live in the US. Let's make this video a little bit more positive and let you guys know to head over to patreon.com slash gasocast to find out all the ways that you can support this channel. We have our upcoming call this weekend on Saturday, September the 16th at 9 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to unveil our New York Comic Con exclusives. I am super stoked to finally share these with you, and I think you're going to love them. So make sure if you're a patron to look out for our Zoom link for level two, three, and four patrons. We'll have more information coming very soon. Also, we have all sorts of giveaway prizes that you guys are going to love. So check out patreon.com slash gasocast. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the like button right here. Okay, so are you all cooled off or? No, like this has me really upset. I can tell, I can, you always have a smell that comes off you when you're angry. You have a smell that comes off you all the time and it ain't good. So you done? So the third WTF is a Luffy with Thousand Sunny. It was a photo posted by NiceGamer307 on Twitter. And the issue is this Funko Pop is actually made in 2023. This was a 2022 winter convention exclusive from right. last year. So it's like they're making more of the con exclusive after the con is over. So this is sort of linkage to what Funko has been doing. It appears to me that Funko was so angry that the secondary market was on fire and people were spending all their money on secondary market that they basically said, we're gonna make a whole lot of stuff and we're gonna sell it and make our money. And additionally, we'll remake whatever we want because we wanna make that money before a person on Macari or on eBay, which is why they have a stake in eBay also. They have a stake in eBay because they're making money off all the Funko products. So now Funko is basically trying to rule the secondary market roost. And this includes remaking Funko Pops from past cons. Yeah, well, we all know how problematic their overproduction is. So let's think about a couple things here. So first, there's gonna be people that are like, well, it's Funko products, they can do whatever they want. Okay, I get it. Like, no, there wasn't anything that explicitly said, we're not gonna remake Pops. So can we really be that mad? But this isn't like a normal common Pop or a Chase Pop or whatever. This is a Pop that was released for a specific event in 2022. There is no reason for them to be making this in 2023 and releasing more. This is a huge problem. This is the equivalent of them saying, F it. You know what we made in 2015 that we absolutely loved? Blue Heisenberg. Breaking Bad is my favorite TV show. That's someone at Funko saying that their favorite TV show is Breaking Bad. And so now they're remaking the Heisenberg pop. But it was exclusive to a 2015 event. Yeah, I don't agree with them remaking Funko Pops like this at all. Now, although they could remake something like they've been doing with these vaulted things where it's the Funko Pop, but it's just a little bit different. So it sets itself apart from the OG. Yeah. But remaking a Funko Pop from just a year ago is incredible. Or you know how during Halloween, Walgreens gets a lot of the OG sort of horror characters in their stores. This is similar to that, except those are like commons. These are not. These yeah. are event exclusive, dated on the sticker. This is what it's exclusive to, and that should be it. They should take a certain amount from that event, sell it, 
and then once it runs out, that's it. But it's like they wanted to make more money. It's Funko holding their own shovel. They're just burying themselves with every instance like this. Again, Funko is a collectible company. That's how they started out. They should have their collectible market routed. It should all be set up and there should be no fluctuation selling and remaking Funko Pops a year down the road. This type of stuff is ridiculous. If they want to be a toy company, why not have an offshoot toy company where you do toys and related things, but you still keep this collectible thing as well in place? Screwing up your collectible thing will screw up the company entirely. It infects everything because now we can't trust Funko. We can't trust that if I go out and buy a Funko Pop on the secondary market for $200 that they're not going to remake it. That's now a concern. We cannot trust what they're saying. We can't trust what they're doing. I lost trust in Funko a long time ago, but recently, between the sticker situation, how can we trust the number that's on the sticker? That's what I'm saying. The chicken sandwiches, how can we trust them to not give us food poisoning? That's right. This situation, how can we trust that they're not going to re-release a pop that is exclusive to a specific event? I agree. I mean, this is messed up. Between the sticker situation and then this situation right here where they're producing pops or reproducing pops from last year, how are we supposed to trust that they're not gonna re-release that Snake Plissken that was what, 500 pieces? James Gunn, that was 500 pieces. The Boba Fett from New York Comic Con a few years ago, that's a thousand pieces. Before you say anything in the comments saying, well, Funko wouldn't do that. Those are limited pieces. Look what they did with the box of fun. Can't trust them. And this thing's a whole mess. And this is something I never thought we would see. This is a version of Funko that's sort of like an evil version of it. Like this is Funko, but with like a, an evil little mustache. It's Oaknuff. Oh, Funko spelled backwards. Uh-huh. Oaknuff. This is work by Oaknuff. Those mother... They definitely twirl that mustache. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And they do a lot of this. Hmm. And they probably have an animal that sits on their lap that they pet evilly. So two of the three stories that we talked about right here are basically Funko burying themselves and screwing things up with the people overseas and shipping items to them regarding fun days. Now this re-release of Thousand Sunnies with Luffy, that's a mess, that's a disaster. And by the way, making a new Fluffy isn't making anybody excited either. No, you said that they're burying themselves, but with the Fluffy thing, they're burying the collectors in Fluffies. the Fluffy Pops. True. So we want to know what you think about these three WTFs. Which one was the most WTFist? I was I would have said WTF -y. We want to know your thoughts and more in the comment section down below. And are you against Funko re-releasing old con pops? That is so wrong. In our opinion, we have to say that because people get really mad. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of the video. We really appreciate all of your support in every video. We like to shout out to some of our patrons. In this video, we'd like to shout out to Ashley Shelley Ann Nelson, George Gifford. Laura Ann Puala, Sergio Lopez, Sephri Roth 81, David Brewer, Keith Clow, Big Papa Tolan, Cloud Splendid, and Yazrai Castillo. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. We appreciate all of our patrons. You guys rock.